The most common misconception I see when addressing limitations within the human body or at one area is to only look at that one area and place all of the blame on one structure. For example, if my knee was caving in when I was walking, running, or squatting, or whatever activity, then people have a tendency to look at the knee and place all the blame on the knee. But the body is a series of connected joints and segments, and nothing acts in isolation. It's very rare that only one muscle or joint is doing something at one point in time alone. So we have influences from both the top down, from the pelvis down to the foot, but we also have influences running from the foot back up to the pelvis. I'm going to spend a lot of time discussing on how the top-down influences of the pelvis influence the foot, but it's important to appreciate that this is a two-way street. Starting up top, the pelvis can move as a whole unit, meaning that as itself, without any of these intricate movements happening here, it can tip forward or it can tip backwards. When it tips forward into an anterior orientation as a whole, you can see how the femurs, the leg bones right here, pick up leverage for internal rotation. The opposite can also be true when it tips back into a posterior orientation, the femurs pick up leverage to go into external rotation. Now this feeds all the way down the chain. So if, let's take the anterior orientation here, if this anterior orientation of the pelvis causes the femurs to go into internal rotation, then the tibias, the lower leg bones, are also going to likely go into internal rotation. That results in a foot that would want to then pronate because internal rotation of the tibia right here causes this motion to occur at the foot, which would flatten the arch. Now, if we had a pelvis that was back in a posterior orientation like this, likely you're going to see tightness of the glutes and deep hip external rotators here, which is going to cause external rotation here, usually external rotation at the tibia, which results in a more supinated foot because you'll see how this would raise the arch because the tibia would be turning outwards. Now that's just the starting point. A couple of different things can happen as a result of not having the range of motion we need to complete the gait walking cycle or run or do whatever activities we need because the pelvis needs to access both internal rotation and external rotation. Now, if we're in so much internal rotation of our femur, let's say we have a pretty forward pelvis here, femur is biased towards internal rotation, we need external rotation for a lot of gait, for a lot of running, for a lot of activities. So we might unconsciously turn our tibia outwards relative to the femur that's in internal rotation. So this bone might turn outwards in an attempt to find the external rotation we don't have. So if the femur is turned in and then this bone is turned out because we're trying to find external rotation, you can see how you can still have a femur in internal rotation, but a tibia that's in external rotation and a more supinated foot position. Or you can just see the tibia turn outwards like this, and then you have a foot that points outwards during normal standing. Likewise, you can also have a femur that's in too much external rotation here. So the tibia tries to make up for the lack of internal rotation by going into an internally rotated state down here relative to the femur that's in external rotation. That could lead to a situation where you have an ankle that is still turned in a little bit and in more of a pronated state because of the tibial position. Now to add even more on top of that, things can vary from side to side in our body. In fact, they almost always do. Very rarely is someone completely asymmetrical on both sides of their body. So what you often see is one side in relative amounts of anterior tilt and the opposite side in relative amounts of posterior tilt. Now as a result, because of this asymmetrical pelvic orientation, you can see how this side of the body in the anterior orientation would struggle to get into more internal rotation because this forward pelvic orientation is driving this femur inwards, which could prevent that person from accessing more internal rotation because that femur is already biased towards that position.
Ultimately, it's very important to have an assessment process both visually and also biomechanically, which is going to lead you to the answer that you're looking for. If you're interested, check out my beginner four-week biomechanics course, which is coming out in February of 2021. Whether you're a coach just starting out or a regular person just trying to understand their own body, this course will require no previous knowledge of how the body works. We'll be discussing basic anatomy and biomechanics and how that relates to our own bodies, how we move, and what we can do to improve both our movement, our posture, and performance when we exercise.